Hello, everybody. I am really excited about today's webinar. Um, Molly and I had the pleasure of going to Smartsheet Engage two weeks ago. So we are here today to give you kind of a recap on um, what we learned at the conference to share it with all of you. I kind of said that. I'm Kelly. I am a solution consultant with Echolocity. Um, I've been with Echo for three and a half years now, I believe, and have been working in Smartsheet heads down pretty much the majority of that time. So self-proclaimed Smartsheet nerd and really excited about the features and functionality that came out at this year's conference. Molly, I'll let you introduce yourself. My name is Molly Giannis and I'm the founder and chief empowerment officer here at Echolocity, um, previously Echo Consulting. And uh, definitely a smart sheet nerd. My brain thinks in sheets. Uh, you can see one of my things that uh, back there, a sticker, it says I'm building a spreadsheet in my head for that. Um, that being said, um, I also love a lot of other different tools. I would say like at Echolocity, Smartsheet is one of our favorite tools. About 50% of our implementations ends up being in Smartsheet, but we are partners with Monday and Airtable and Teamwork and Asana and a bunch of other ones too. So it's always fun when we go to these Smartsheet conferences and equating it to different features in other places. Um, so whether it's Microsoft Planner or Airtable or something like that, as we're looking at these features, we're like connecting how we use other tools to solve problems and all of the new use cases that can be implemented uh, with Smartsheet. So uh, also with Smartsheet, because they do share so much forward facing content, uh, we get really excited um, to see what's going to uh, be possible for clients and solutions going forward. So again, Molly Giannis, founder, sorry that was a long intro, but I'm excited to be here as well. There we go. Okay, and just really quick, as from an agenda perspective, we're going to jump into an overview of Engage, what it is, what we experienced there. We're going to give high level of the themes of um, the roadmap that we saw, and we're going to go into specific features. Um, we're also going to talk about the new pricing and subscription model, and we'll open it up for questions if anyone has any. So go ahead, Molly. Absolutely. So guys, for those of you that don't know, Smartsheet has an annual user conference every year in Seattle. They are also going to be starting to do some user conferences. They did one in London. Um, so they're going to try to do one for uh, EU as well for any of our EU clients and teams. Um, but uh, this one is their largest conference. There were over 3,500 different participants there. It included both brand new users, basic users, intermediate users, um, as well as their advanced experts. We were there for the partner forum, but then they also have people, they had clients that were speakers. Some of our clients were speakers. Um, they also had people that were uh, what are called overachievers, so experts in their community and things like that. So it was a pretty wide um, range of people that were at this conference. And uh, there were a lot of different educational sessions, anywhere from certifications all the way to specific user experiences, specific user use cases. Um, and one of the things I like to mention for Engage is it's Smartsheet, more than any other work management system that we implement, has a very active and positive community online as well as in person. So there's a lot of people that are Smartsheet nerds, Smartsheet overachievers. They just love the uh, platform and how it helps them solve problems. So I would say that the energy was high. Um, Smartsheet brought some great technical resources to play and this engaged they actually had free tech sessions um, which was very well um, attended so you could just sign up to sit down with someone and bring your computer and things like that so we had several clients that took advantage of that um, i would say that it was really great so support as well as uh, demoing real solutions as well as future facing components um, for engage i would typically not recommend it as like a high value for brand new users. Um, I would usually uh, coach people that if they're going to send someone to engage, it's usually an intermediate level user. If you're going to send a decision maker or a budget owner there, you just want to make sure that they're technical enough to sift through what is real versus what is sales speak. Um, so those are the two kind of gotchas warnings that I mentioned um, for the conference. 
We saw, I think, 11 clients of our clients attended this year, um, and most of them were uh, either intermediate or advanced. I think we had one client that went that was more of an entry level um, and was really exploring. Uh, Smartsheet is uh, really trying to narrow down. So before it was Smartsheet can do anything, and we don't need to have a specific like use case. But where we've seen some of the other work management platforms start to differentiate their solutions. So Monday, one of Smartsheet's main clients client of uh, main partners they have like um, they have their PM solution versus their CRM solution versus their work management solution so they've already started to even though it's the same platform in most cases they've started to kind of uh, break up into sections their product or their platform um, to target messaging to specific users so while Smartsheet is not um, going the route of breaking up their platform into sections, um, they are starting to be more specific about their messaging in the value proposition, which I actually think is really positive. Um, so they've always had this concept of PMO, but they've broken it out into three different use cases. So the use case of the enterprise PMO, which tends to be on the more strategic side of things, strategic planning, strategic goals, um, and kind of across everything, all business units versus the IT PMO, projects that are digital in nature, usually um, product based. And oftentimes they have that integrator with JIRA and, and um, Azure and things like that. And then the concept of a business PMO. So oftentimes this could be like an operational PMO or a marketing, a very specific business unit within the organization that's still rolling up information across multiple levels of hierarchy, like a program or a budget or, um, you know, a set of projects or a set of business lines or something like that. Um, additionally to the PMO use case, which is the general one that Smartsheet usually talks about, they're breaking out marketing and content management or marketing management out from the PMO use case. Um, so you'll see more information about event management, campaign management, components like that. Um, and then they have creative operations as well. And you'll hear them starting to talk more about um, individual assets. And one of the things Kelly's gonna talk to you about is the file library and proofing and some of the way that they're doubling down on some of the content management, asset management components. And then finally, they are kind of calling out service delivery separate from IT PMO or business PMO. And so talking about ticketing and workflow automation and ad hoc requests in a little bit of a different way and starting to put some teeth behind their professional services use case. So I am very happy that Smartsheet is not choosing to break up their platform for the different use cases, but instead just articulating the value proposition of how their platform can be used for these different scenarios. One of the key benefits we love of Smartsheet is it is flexible enough to work with both a financial team as well as a marketing team, as well as sales and things like that. The one use case that I would say that Smartsheet did not include and really isn't spending a lot of time highlighting, um, which some of their competitors are, is the CRM use case. So while we do have smaller clients that are definitely using Smartsheet as their CRM, as their client management platform, um, Smartsheet is not specifically calling that out in their use cases. Um, they're tending to talk about their use cases in a more mid to enterprise level account. So I will just call that out. We have seen them use it for Smartsheet for um, We've built solutions for CRM and Smartsheet. We've also built solutions for some invoicing and billing and things like that. Um, but that's not where they highlighted, at least for this engage and this year for their marketing assets. Kelly, back to you. Awesome. So now into some of the really, really exciting stuff. So we're going to go through some of what they reviewed in their keynote and in some product roadmap sessions that they had during the conference, which was really exciting for us Smartsheet nerds. Um, I kind of broke up um, this into a few themes that I took away from what they're really focusing on. So the first one that I noticed is scale. Um, and I know just as a solution builder, this is something that we come across quite frequently is okay, based on your very large data set, where are we gonna run into 
um, data limits, smart sheet maximums, the number of rows, number of cells, number of cross sheet references, all of that. And they are really trying to grow in that space um, and, and, and build to scale to allow for more data management. So um, really their big, big thing that they talked about there is rolling out table view, which we'll talk about when we get into the individual features. Um, the next theme that we really took away was collaboration. They have a couple of really big features coming out, one called collections. Um, think of folder sharing, we'll go in more depth, and then also file library. So a little bit more in depth in that document management, which you could understand based on them having that use case of creative operations and the marketing and content management, they really need to make sure that they have the tools in place for those use cases. Um, so that was another big one. And then the last theme I would call out is integration. They're really trying to target a more seamless experience, trying to bring as many of, you know, if you're familiar with the Smartsheet Advanced tools, a lot of them are kind of in separate user interfaces and different experiences. They're trying to, um, they have a goal of bringing that together. I wouldn't say there's any uh, features right out of the gate that's bringing that together, but they are definitely working towards that. Um, they're also doing integrations or they're focused on their AI tools. They have an integration with Amazon Q, I believe it's called, um, with their AI tool. And I didn't note this here, but also making sure like a back to the seamless experience, there's some integrations that they've created um, with resource management as well to kind of create a more seamless experience. So again, these are just the high level themes that I noticed from a lot of the different features they were talking about and kind of where it seems that Smartsheet is going with their platform. Um, so now we're going to kind of dive into the individual features. Okay. And for most of these, I'm just, I have slides on each of the high level features that I want to talk about. Um, most of them I'm not going to be able to demo uh, because they may not be available yet, but I can demo table view. So I will jump into that in just a second. Quick plug before I jump in, if you're not already set up for the early adopter program, feel free to pop that into Google and go enroll yourself. If you're a system admin, you can request your entire organization to be added, um, or you can just request it to be an individual. Not a requirement, but what's cool with the early adopter program is it allows you to get early access to features that they're testing. Be aware that obviously when you're getting access to these features, they are in more of a beta type environment, right? They're not fully built out to the maximum capabilities that they hope for it to go. But it is kind of cool because you can start to see what they're coming out with and play around with it before it is, you know, fully um, launched in their in their product release notes. Um, and then another just uh, kind of gotcha, if you do sign up for the doctor program and you're doing it individually, just be aware if you're talking to other users within your organization, they may not be able to see what you see. I forget that sometimes. So um, just a quick gotcha there. Awesome. So table view, they really talked about this in the conference as building their platform from the ground up or rebuilding their platform from the ground up to manage scale. Their table view um, is going to be able to support at this time, and we, based on what they are sharing, it's likely going to continue to grow. But at this point, it's going to be holding 1 million cells and 50,000 rows, which is kind of two times what they can hold now, um, which is 500,000 cells and 20,000 rows. Um, in the keynote, he talked a lot about um, speed as well. So there's a faster load, faster editing, instant autosave. Um, the SAP had it called out 10 times faster formula calculations. Um, and it, in addition to just holding more data and being able to, um, you know, this data kind of work faster, they're also talking about some efficiency gains, especially for those of us, again, who are like solution builders or even just your in-house like um, company champion. Things like able to paste a thousand rows, which to be honest, off the top of my head, I don't know how many you can do now, but it's less than that, um, obviously. And then also no limit um, of a typo here, but no limit on deleting columns. So right now in the grid view, you can only delete five columns at a time. In the table view, you can delete as many columns at a time as you want. That one actually got a big cheer at the conference, um, which was quite funny just because obviously for all of the super users that are in Smartsheet, these are the tiny little pain points that we deal with, that we're just kind of used to. And But they listen to us, they hear our feedback, and, and they are rolling that in. So I'm going to exit out of my presentation really quick and just show you what this looks like here. So again, you will not see this. If you are not a part of the early adopter program, if you are a part of the early adopter program, you should be able to see the table preview. So you can kind of see that the look and feel looks a little bit um, 
enhanced, upgraded, and um, a few, again, you can, I can even demo it here. Like it's gonna let me delete, let's see if I can get a bunch of them. You know, delete as many columns as I want. So this is nine columns. Woo, I can delete nine at a time or more. So that's exciting. You can also tell they're just trying to create a better kind of ease of use. For example, over here on the left-hand side, it allows you to indent from the row itself versus having to like move your mouse all the way to the top. Um, they are also making it a little bit easier for you to add rows by adding these little plus signs. They're kind of like these really little micro adjustments, but that are gonna create this efficiency for the people that are using this tool day in and day out. Um, to do another one um, that is exciting to see. Let me find a formula. So um, they have a new, if I go to edit formula, they have a new flyout for formulas. <clears throat> Again, if you're familiar and you use formulas now, sometimes what you might find is it, it, the cell pops open and it's blocking all these key cells that you have to reference to get in your formula. This is supposed to like help support that. So they're building out this file. And based on what they said, I think they're going to be building out even more helpers to kind of help drive you build formulas and write formulas. They already have AI tools to do that, which we'll get into as well. So really the theme here just being scale, speed, and making it a lot easier for users to, um, you know, to work on Smirchy and, and be more efficient in their day-to-day -day jobs. I'm trying to think of what else. Um, here, uh, they're also kind of like streamlining this um, bar up here. So you can see it's kind of a little bit more um, simplified. And then you can click on this and then it will show more. You can click on the formula bar. I believe that's going to pull out the formula slide out as I just covered. So a lot of exciting stuff with table view. There is also some like just for now gotchas like you can't move columns around right now, which is a bummer. So it's not really usable yet, I would say. I would say it's more like, that's why I think they're saying preview. You can explore it. You can start to see where they're going with it. Start to see the efficiencies that they're that they're trying to make. Um, and yeah, really just play around with it and, and hopefully get excited about it. I'm so sorry if I missed you saying this, Kelly, but like the sort piece is something that I'm really pumped about, I think the sort piece and then also the fact that they were talking about conditional formatting at levels and things like that. Just a lot of things that Echo has been doing workarounds and showing clients, uh, showing teams how to work around for a while um, that now they're going to make native as part of the solution. And where I see that going is it's making it easier than ever for people to solve problems with Smartsheet um, and be independent. So really love the direction that they're going um, to make it more accessible to more people. The other piece is accessibility, which we didn't actually talk about last time, but um, they are going to make it accessible um, and meet accessibility guidelines as well. Um, so that's really important as well for some, especially some of our enterprise organizations that have requirements around that. Yes, Jason. I, I might have missed this if you said it already, Kelly, uh, but uh, is the intent for this view to supplant the, the default grid view that we're all that we all know, love, and or hate? Yeah, so the um, in the product roadmap session, Ben, the SVP of product experience, said that this is replacing grid view. Um, my prediction on that uh, is that it's going to be a long ways out. He pretty much said that we will not deprecate grid view until you, the customers, tell us that, that you have everything you need in table view. So I'm sure initially there's going to be, especially right now, again, it's a preview. Once table becomes a little bit more usable, people might start using it. But because they are still building on it, I'm sure there'll be certain things that people are going to be like, oh, I got to go back to grid view to do it the way I'm used to doing it or do it this more efficient way that table view can't do it yet. So anyway, long answer, but um, the, the answer to your question is yes, it will replace grid view eventually down the line. And the way that they're expecting that to go, Jason, is that new functionality will be built into table. And so it will be a, br not bribery, but like an incentive situation versus a, you can't have grid view anymore. So new functionality like cascading conditional, um, uh, uh, conditional formatting and stuff like that won't be 
in grid view. It'll only be in table. Um, and so what'll happen is eventually people will want table more than grid. Yep, absolutely. Awesome, thank you. <gasps> Perfect. Okay, so the next one up is collections. I grabbed this little fun uh, animated video from Smartsheet's website. Um, and I took this quote from, again, I've been referencing him a few times because Ben is the SVP of product experiences at Smartsheet. He delivered a keynote um, on the first day of the conference. And then he also did a more detailed roadmap session, <clears throat> excuse me, later that day. And when he presented this, he said collections, think of it, think of collections as folder sharing, but better. Right. I've been working on Smartsheet or in Smartsheet for several years now, and we've been talking about folder sharing for quite some time. Um, so what's really cool about collections is it's going to allow you to share individual assets um, across multiple workspaces in one collection. So I put some use cases down here, like think of it kind of from a persona perspective, like, OK, I have an executive audience who needs to only see these couple of dashboards and these couple of reports. But your workspace structure is structured in a way for the users, right? Because the users are the ones that are in there day in and day out, and it needs to be organized, whether it be, you know, individual workspaces for specific projects, or if you do workspaces by programs or by department or something along those lines, right? Whatever your navigational organization makes sense. You can create a collection for executives and just say, OK, I want to add this dashboard, this dashboard and this dashboard across multiple other dashboards um, and then give them the specific permissions that you want. Um, for dashboard, it's always going to be viewer. But if it were to be some sheets um, rolled in there, you could give them editor access. You could give them commenter access or just viewer access. The permission levels are actually just like work apps. So if you're familiar with work apps, it's a similar um, a similar-ish kind of experience, but it's going to be in line, like right within Smartsheet. A collection will live in a workspace, so it has to live in a workspace. But again, you can add assets to it from multiple different workspaces. Um, you can also add um, external links, dynamic views, um, and things like that. Even like documents, I believe. Um, no. I asked that question. <laughs> I asked oh, that question in a partner one literally right before this meeting. So right now it's not documents. It's only the links that you can can do to the document types like embeddables and things like that. But right now it's not individual documents in there. Oh, okay. um, Good yep, I asked that question earlier because I was also confused about that. Um, so at this exact moment, what if you are familiar with work apps, that is what can show up in collections. So basically, sheets and reports and dashboards, dynamic views, as Kelly mentioned, um, forms for sure, and then any non smart sheet content that you want to add into a collection. So Google Drive, Miro, SharePoint, Vimeo, things like that. Um, embeddable links um, will be able to show up um, in the collection for navigation. And so Kelly nailed it in terms of being able to provide kind of that custom tailored user um, experience so that the assets that you want to see in Smartsheet are in the right order and things like that. So um, getting pretty excited about collections. Um, and uh, at this point, it's not a situation where they're replacing work apps. They're integrating the experience into Smartsheet and it's going to have some new fun capabilities. So the hope is that people will choose collections over. The one big piece that we want to mention about collections, guys, is that you can only access collections if you sw switch over to the user um, the user model, their new licensing model. So we'll talk about that at the end. But this is definitely one of those things that they're trying to bribe slash incentivize people to move over to the new user model. So um, it's exciting. And we're, we're aware that not a lot of people are going to have access to it in the beginning. Awesome. Thanks, Molly. A awesome. big benefit so of collection, sorry, if you guys do have work apps, I just want to mention perhaps the biggest thing that I'm really noticing is work apps is a single user, um, like a single owner. And that means that if people leave, it's a really big issue with collections. It's going to be the same as Smartsheet, as, as Kelly mentioned, which means that you can have multiple different admins. You're not in a situation where only one people can edit it. So it's going to be far more scalable, those unique um, uh 
like navigation concepts. Yeah, really, really good call out. <clears throat> awesome. Okay, so next up is file library. Um, just to piggyback off what Molly just said, since it's fresh on the mind, this is also a feature that is only available if you are on the new user subscription model, which is why right now we don't have it demo demoable as partners. We will at some point, but right now I don't have a demoable environment. Um, so these are some screen grabs that I grabbed from the keynote speech <clears throat> that Ben did. So a file library is going to be associated with every single workspace. So it's document management within each workspace. Um, a couple of the really cool highlights is that you're going to be able to annotate specific assets. So again, if you're thinking about the marketing and creative operations use cases, you can literally um, call out like a specific section of a flyer or go on a specific, you can see on this um, screen grab here, it's for a video though, that you can uh, like call out on a specific timestamp on the video and leave comments um, on that content. So really streamlining a whole, like the content review process and potentially approval process for marketing teams. They really talked about it as like a way to create more efficiency in asynchronous working teams, team members on different, um, you know, time zones and kind of replacing the need to have meetings or at least kind of like reduce that uh, friction in the process. Um, so I thought that was really cool being able to annotate. It doesn't show here because I think my bookmarks bar is blocking it. Um, I just want to show you guys. So I'm going to move this a little bit. But you can see how it shows like in the timestamps on the video with uh, someone's face because that's like where in the video they're specifically commenting. They also talked about more robust versioning capabilities, um, which is great. And then some search and tagging functions. So the ability to tag your um, files for better uh, search capabilities. They also have some filtering and sorting. So you can see in this screen grab, they have uh, search um, a little search magnifying glass, a filter option, and a sort option um, to make it easy to use. Anything you would add, Molly? No, it's really interesting to see how the market is going in collaboration software right now. So um, document management versus knowledge management versus digital asset management. So for those of you guys for a little bit of history, Smartsheet purchased Brand Folder, which is a digital asset man uh, management. It's got a uh, has a separate user licensing model, right? And then so far, they have been able to upload files to specific rows and have some basic um, versioning. Then they added proofs. Now they're really providing pretty in-depth file management. So for a lot of our small and mid-sized companies, this can be super powerful to keep this all in one platform. It's really interesting to me that Smartsheet's choosing to go this route versus a deeper integration with SharePoint or Google or something like that. So they're not excluding those yet or Box or something or any of those other ones, but it's interesting that they're bringing this capability into the Smartsheet platform. Um, and I will be interested to see how well adopted it is um, as well. Uh, I, I think that the proofing capabilities are very exciting. Um, yeah, I, th there's just, it's a, it's interesting, I, I've talked to Gartner recently about how they're breaking it up, right? So a long time ago, we basically had project management software and document management software. And now we have this document management versus digital asset management versus knowledge management software, learning management software systems and things like that. And now we're even breaking out from project management software versus work management, task management versus marketing management. So it's interesting to see how people position themselves. So like our organization at Echo, we are a Microsoft partner and we use Teams and SharePoint, but we also use Smartsheet and we also use Loom for our videos and we use Miro for some of our whiteboarding capabilities. And it's very interesting because I'm seeing a movement in the in a lot of organizations that they want to consolidate, right? They want less software. And so Smartsheet is positioning themselves as more capabilities within one platform. And what I like about Smartsheet is they're also making it more accessible for non super technical people to be able to solve problems like this. So um, I'll be super curious to see what their traction is. Um, given that you've got a lot of teams that have 
uh, a lot of experience with some of the other document management, knowledge management, file management systems um, to see how it all plays out with Smartsheet. Awesome, thanks. Okay, um, AI tools. This was a big focus at the conference. They had a lot of breakout sessions about AI. Obviously, we know <clears throat> this is ever growing and big in all industries, um, the growing space and, and using ChatGPT for a lot of things. So Smartsheet has brought AI tools directly into their platform to help um, users in their day-to-day -day work. So <clears throat> the three categories that they have right now are analyzed data, formulas and text and summaries. They are, um, they did talk about a fourth conference and I've also seen some help pages in Smartsheets um, documentation for a get help option. So rather than going to Google questions about Smartsheet functionality, going to Smartsheet help pages, you can actually ask the AI tool questions about Smartsheet functionality and it will provide you the answer and then probably the link to the, the resource within the Smartsheet ecosystem so you don't have to go digging for it yourself. Um, so I actually think that's really cool. It's a really cool kind of training opportunity, um, <clears throat> help make more seamless onboarding experiences for organizations using Smartsheet in their day-to-day -day operations. Um, but again, I don't see it live yet. I am an early adopter and I, I haven't seen it in there. Um, so let me take you through these three. Analyze data, it allows you to kind of ask it questions and ask for insights. You can just ask for like a specific number or calculation, or you can ask for a chart like you see here. So I just typed in and said, create a chart of tasks by status. So this is in a um, <clears throat> project plan that I have, and it gives me this chart. Unfortunately, right now, all you can do with this chart is take a copy or download it. You could use it in like a presentation that you might have or an email that you're sending out. It allows you to kind of like extract um, on demand insights. Maybe it's not a metric or thing that you're tracking on a regular basis in your dashboards, but you can ask this analyzed data for a quick kind of analysis. Um, hoping that maybe sometime down the line, you could kind of pop one of these widgets into a dashboard or something along those lines um, to prevent you from having to create them. But right now it just allows you to copy it and download it and use it in, in other resources. Um, the next one, which I think right now is the most helpful is the um, formulas um, tool within their AI. So you can essentially tell it what you're looking for a formula to do, and then it will spit out a formula for you that you can add to your sheet and then make a column formula. So this is huge right now. Um, a big common practice, if you're not already doing it, is using the Smartsheet community for formula questions. The Smartsheet community is still amazing, has a lot of super users in there asking questions. I know early on I used it quite a bit um, when I was getting going on, on uh, learning formulas a little bit better. Sometimes if you're stuck, you can pop one in there and someone will give you the formula that you need or point you in the right direction. This is cool because you can do it right within the um, right within the Smartsheet system and you can actually apply it to uh, your sheet. Um, and I've tested it uh, a lot recently and it's, it's working pretty well for me. So. Um, yeah, I think this one is the most useful, as my personal opinion. Um, one thing that it doesn't do, though, for everyone's awareness, is it's not going to create a formula for you that is a cross-sheet formula. So it's only going to do formulas that you're referencing data within this sheet, because it's it's not going to generate like cross-sheet references or even just a helper of what the cross-sheet reference would be. Um, but hopefully that's coming down the line. Um, the last one is text and summaries. Um, the use case that Smartsheet talks about a lot for this one is like, say you have a, a, sh a product sheet, um, you know, you're a retail shop and you have a product sheet, it can, you can say, hey, take the data in this row and generate an ad, like generate ad copy uh, that is 200 characters or less or 100 characters or less or whatever. It does that. Um, you can also um, translate to another language. Honestly, I don't speak another language, so I don't know how well that translation works, um, but it does do that. <clears throat> I did hear just an example of like summarizing a row of data into kind of like a sentence versus just broken up by those cells. Um, I would love to see this go to where you can get a summary on an overall sheet. I read in their documentation that right now the text and summaries does, um, will summarize up to 10 rows at a time. Frankly, I haven't figured out how to do that yet. Um, I was testing it and it was a little wonky for me, but um, you can do it on a on a per row basis pretty, pretty seamlessly. Any of my colleagues, do you guys have any examples or any use cases that you guys have seen or used AI tools for? 
I don't know, a few team members on the call. Maybe not. I know they're kind of newer. No, oh, it's exciting though. Um, if you know, we're we're able to you know populate these formulas, especially for folks who aren't familiar with them. You know, through this functionality, that's going to be a game changer. We just have Absolutely. to get in there. And totally. I'll have a little bit more of like a pessimistic <laughs> view on this, which is like. I basically view AI as table stakes at this point. Like everyone has to have AI. Everyone has a message around AI. As we look at budgets for 2025, IT budgets are increasing at like a lower rate than they have previously. And like the areas that they're still investing in is AI and things like that. So to me, this is, um, they have to have it. Um, that being said, two of the lead people in their product, um, in their product uh, team, are very interested. I've been following them on LinkedIn. They're very much on top of it. So I think that they have a couple of tech leaders in Smartsheet that are definitely on top of it. So I'm excited. I'm hopeful that they will have new things that are even more exciting, um, especially with dashboarding and other things. Um, but I'm glad that they're not falling behind on this, which I don't think that they are. I don't think they're falling behind. I think they're staying in line with the herd on AI integration pieces. Um, I think that they have some really cool potential if they get some headwind on AI um, in the dashboarding space and automation space. Um, so that's where I'm hoping that they're going to go next um, on this. Yeah, that's fair. Makes sense. <clears throat> okay, and more. I highlighted just a few other updates that I didn't um, give them their own stage and their own slide that we can talk through that, that were kind of not highlighted as heavily, but they were mentioned and discussed in a few of the different um, sessions that we went to. So um, I did mention one of the themes, it seems to be like the seamless experience, trying to bring everything into the Smartsheet core UI as possible versus having this disjointed experience with all these separate add-ons. Um, a couple of the things that we learned about even while just like talking and walking around the booths and talking with product managers, they're going to be bringing global updates um, from Control Center into the Smartsheet UI. They're also going to be expanding the capabilities to allow you to make multiple different updates at a time, which is awesome. Um, they've also actually already released program reporting, which I don't know if you need to be on the early adopter program. I think you do for that one. Um, and essentially, if you are familiar with smart, with, if you're familiar with control center, it is very similar to a dynamic scope report. It allows you to, rather than select source sheets or select a workspace as your source, it allows you to select a specific template within a blueprint to automatically pull any of those templates from any project that's provisioned into a report and then set your filters. Um, so that's a really big one uh, as a solution builder. We're really excited about that one. Um, dynamic views, uh, Molly, I'm gonna let you speak to this one because I think you were talking about this and I don't, I don't remember what this one is. For dynamic views are going to become like assets that can be navigated to in browse and in workspaces and things like that. So it's going to be an easier navigation and easier in terms of ownership and other things like that. So it's going to be more fully integrated into the existing platform. Um, I do think permissioning is still separately, but um, I'm happy if you guys are part of it, you, you probably have noticed that in the browse functionality, you can now see forms as separate assets. They're not just clicking within the sheet and seeing it. Same concept for dynamic views. Um, and I would say the dynamic view is um, it's an add on. It's not part of the core right now, but it's probably the most popular add on we see clients adding because of if you're not familiar with dynamic view, it allows you to pick and choose which columns people can update um, and rows and things like that. So it's a way to get around the needing to have the underlying sheet data um, access um, in order to update specific rows. So um, excited to see dynamic view getting more fully integrated into the core platform. Awesome. Yeah. And the next one was um, this new feature that's that they're just building right now, I believe. Um, I think they said maybe it was coming out in January, but I don't know for sure. Um, and data linking is essentially what I see as data mesh in the, again, Smartsheet UI versus having a disjointed experience. It's going to allow you to select a source sheet, select the sheet that you're in as the target, um, identify what column is the unique identifier and then pull data in from another sheet to map it into this sheet. So it's kind of like a slide out, um, at least in the prototype I saw, um, just like kind of that formula slide out I showed you and it allows you to do data linking. 
So um, it kind of could do a, a support like a reduction in formulas, which is really great and kind of speaks to their theme of scale, right? Because we run into maximums with formulas, cross sheet references, cross sheet ranges, all of that stuff. Um, it is just one data point, so it's not going to replace like a multi-point formula, um, but it could replace like a simple type of V lookup slash index match uh, type formula to kind of pull a specific data set into a sheet. Um, so really this excited. is this is a foundational step that they need to do from a scalability standpoint and a usability standpoint for non-technical users, non-formula people. So I'm I'm very excited about this. Um, there are other platforms that we've seen that have done this successfully, um, and so I'm excited to see Smartsheet going in this direction. Um, and uh, yeah, very very excited to see this going in this direction. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and then resource management, they highlighted, this has already been out for a little while, but they did talk about it <clears throat> during the conference. Um, so if you've used resource management, you know that it does integrate with Smartsheet Core at the project plan level, essentially taking percentage allocation of resources and pushing that into resource management, which is great. But it wouldn't then take the resource allocation data and push it back into Smartsheet, which becomes a really big issue when you're trying to look at reports um or add data from resource management onto a dashboard which is a very very common request so it was a huge gap that they were missing for quite a long time they now have advanced integrated reporting in resource management which allows you to essentially take the data from resource management and i don't know if exports the right word but like create a smart sheet report with that data and then you can build charts and reports um on that data onto a dashboard which is which is great and something that they've been missing for quite a while um and I'll just add a little bit on that. So they name it a couple of different things, right? So again, a quick history lesson, Smartsheet purchased a company called 10,000 Feet. 10,000 Feet has a more robust resourcing, capacity, forecasting, time tracking model. They've been integrating features within Smartsheet of that. They renamed 10,000 Feet by Smartsheet to be resource management by Smartsheet. Now they are positioning resource management as... Um, you know, a, a tool is a use case that you can do within Smartsheet. And so they've released the workload tracking views um, to be not like in Smartsheet core, it doesn't require an RM license, um, a separate license for this. So this is something that can be enabled on existing projects right now. Um, it does need to get enabled on a project by project basis. Um, and so it's moving in the right direction. Uh, they have competitors that have workload views and tracking that we already include on dashboards, like Monday definitely has it, Asana has it, things like that. So we're glad to see Smartsheet rolling this into the core platform, core licensing. Um, there have been a couple of things with clients we've seen that have been using workload management, just some gotchas. So just be aware and test it as you go to make sure that it's showing what you're looking for. Um, definitely some things in terms of like archiving or deleting sheets or something like with things still showing up. So they're still working um, on this functionality, but it's a great direction. And I'm really excited to see this because the number one issue people have with managing multiple projects and, and managing project prioritization, et cetera, is resource management. So I'm happy to see Smartsheet making sure that they're focusing, that they're that they're aware of that and focusing it and continuing to add to the capabilities of resource management. Yeah, really good call outs. Um, these are a couple kind of like smaller updates, but they're continuing to invest in the new views, timeline view and board view. He did call out, he said in the keynote by the end of the year, the timeline view will be available to add to dashboards. So that's exciting. I already have clients that have been asking for that. Um, and then they're continuing to invest in board view, which at this point has been pretty much the same thing as card view, except just like an upgrade in looks. I think I keep quoting Molly from another a what's new with Smartsheet webinar where we did and she called it. It looks like it's from the 90s. So, <laughs> so at first they rolled view. It's kind of just an upgrade into the century uh, of from an aesthetic perspective. Um, but they are definitely focusing, similar to the conversation about focusing new enhancements on the table view. They're going to be focusing new enhancements on the board view. So things like sorting within lanes, inline card editing, um, and then he called out color coding, which I don't know exactly what that functionality is going to look like, but probably some form of conditional formatting, but just specifically for the table view. I mean, sorry for the board view for cards um, so the yeah so there's a, a few of the other things that were called out 
Awesome. Yeah, That's so it's going to make if you are if you if your organization is um, uses more agile methodology, um, it's going to be a much more robust Kanban style board versus a very simple um, column dragon uh, uh, card view board. So we are very much excited, um, and there will be some additional formatting that's going to make it far more visually uh, pleasing and ability to use it in standups and in um, project team meetings. So we're excited. I like Jason's chat. He wrote the upgraded UI, even if it's just aesthetic, means a lot to some people, which is actually a really good call out because if you're a visual person, you might not like Smartsheet at first, um, or at least in, like previous to this, right? They're working on their aesthetics. Um, but if you compare, you know, a grid platform like Smartsheet to a Monday or an Asana or a ClickUp, those other tools where they kind of are more aesthetic and modern looking, um, for those visual people, they might kind of like look to those tools a little bit more. Um, and Smartsheet has been has been lacking there. So yeah, that was a good call. Curb out, appeal. Curb appeal matters when you're trying to roll out and get people to adopt things. If they think it's ugly, it matters. And if they're expecting a little plus button and it's not there, that matters. Those buttons, call it the purple cat. You know, there's a great, there's a great um there's a couple of great books on it, right? But like those things matter. When we are talking to clients about implementing solutions, we oftentimes say, right, like the middle 80% of functionality is very similar between, but it's those extreme cases on either side, things that people love, things that people hate. I hate things that don't drag and drop. It is a critical thing for me. Half of the tools that we implement don't have drag and drop, but it's a critical component for me. It's literally one of the main differentiators that makes Smartsheet so much better for me than so many other tools, because if it doesn't have that, you are not getting me to adopt it. And so it's really interesting, right? And so some of these things that Smartsheet's doing it is because their competitors have it. It's not necessarily like the most obnoxious thing for us that are already champions of the platform, but it can be a critical deciding point of people adopting it. And we all know that to get your full return on investment for Smartsheet licensing for any software licensing, you need to get adoption so that you can trust the data and you can trust the solution. So I, I was very happy with the roadmap. I was very happy with what's been delivered. Um, they are focusing on resilience not just features, which I think is important. Table view is completely built from the ground up from a, a more capacity, a, a, a more data capacity standpoint. So i um, very excited to see that. And they are adding additional enterprise features for security and management at, a, at scale, um, all of which is very exciting. I'm gonna let you just jump right into this next one, Mom. Yes. So guys, at a high level, um, they are changing their pricing model. It's not a shocking change. A lot of um, a lot of uh, work management software requires everyone that edits something to be a licensed user. They're going to be adjusting some of their pricing down. Um, a lot of the clients that already have Smartsheet, you're already in an annual or multi-year agreement. Um, it's not something that's going to um, interfere with that. But that being said, they are incentivizing people to move over to their new user model. Um, and so there are deals to be had right now to switch over to the user model um, early um, so that you can get ac ac uh, access to the new features, but also so that you can get a deal. Um, so their plan right now is at renewal, they're going to be moving people to a user model. Kelly, can you move to one slide up? So right now, pro business enterprise, um, and uh, what they're going to be doing with this new model is um, they're going to, right now, the way it works is if people get to something and they want to edit something and they don't have a license, they will get a little button that says request a license. And then whoever's the admin is going to get pinged every single time someone requests a license and they're going to have to make a decision being like, does this person need a license or not? It's causing a lot of issues for enterprise for, you know, at scale organizations because the IT person that might be getting pinged is not the person who owns the budget necessarily. Um, and they might not know whether this person needs a license or not. So there's a difference between permission to an individual asset or file versus having a license and whether you are capable of making an edit. So what Smartsheet is doing is they're going to switch it from request a license to what they're calling provisional status. So what this means is, is if someone has permission, 
like is added as an editor and is not a licensed user, doesn't have a Smartsheet license, they're going to be able to edit that specific asset that they were given permission for, and they'll move into a state that's called like provisional. So it's a member provisional. Now, what's gonna happen is Smartsheet's gonna do this thing called true up. So rather than have to purchase 10 licenses or 20 licenses, so like let's say I'm an IT person, someone requests a license, I don't have any licenses available, I have to go purchase another 10 licenses or go back to Smartsheet and deal with their sales reps. No offense, but you know, like to avoid that when you can. Um, or you have to go ask someone and then move someone else's license. Instead, it's just going to literally have them act like they're a licensed user. Where the true up comes is before the quarterly true up, um, the 30 days before, the sysadmin's gonna get basically a report, a list of all the users that are provisional. If they don't do anything, at the end of that true up, they're going to be moved into members and they're going to get billed for them. If they make them not a member and instead move them back to being a um, a viewer, then that person will be a viewer and they won't be a um, they won't be a member anymore. They won't have edit access anymore. So that's kind of the concept of provisional. They're still working it all out, but there's pros and cons to the approach, right? So one pro is that you're not in a situation where I need to edit this and I'm waiting for someone in IT, which doesn't necessarily know whether or not I need a license um, to go at it, or everyone can just add a license as long as they're available and you have to just get buckets of licenses, right? Um, the potential con is that people could just be, you know, they add themselves in there. And if the sysadmin doesn't go in and look to see who's provisional, who's gonna be made a member, then they're getting billed for those new users without actually you know, expecting that additional bill. This is not specific to Smartsheet. It's um, like HubSpot does this. I mean, like there's several other softwares that do this. Um, you pretty much are like, this is your threshold. If you go over this threshold, you're gonna get automatically billed. I would say where Smartsheet does nice is that they are gonna give you 30 days warning. Um, they'll have the information. You'll be able to report on it. You'll be able to make a decision. I think it'll be easier for the sysadmin as long as that person is trained. Um, so that would be the one thing. Like they need to know that on a quarterly basis, they need to go check and they need to be making those edits. They're giving you 30 days to make those edits. So um, hopefully that'll happen. But we'll definitely be reaching out to our clients and previous clients over the next month or two to offer to talk through licensing with them um, and also just, you know, training them up a little bit on how this will work from a sysadmin standpoint because it's it's going to be interesting. We've had clients that have voluntarily gone towards the new licensing model already. Um, some of them, it's saved them money. Some of them, it's cost them more. Um, there's ways of solutioning that can help in one way or another. So that's another thing that, you know, Echo is going to reach out to and be like, hey, you know, this is how this works. What does this mean for your solution? So in some cases, for example, instead of editing a, a row on a report, which might require, which is going to require a license, you can send an update request instead. Um, and that won't require a license. Um, but it's really going to depend on a role by role use case by use case person whether or not someone needs to be licensed um, or cannot and so that's where i think we're going to reach out we're going to have um, we can certainly help with the licensing conversation echo um, has a history of trying to avoid licensing at all costs and just letting sales deal with that because we really prefer to help organizations solution and build really fun stuff we're nerds I do believe that with this change, we have, there's enough of an implication for our clients and their solutions and how this is going to work. And there's enough push in the, in, in the, in the ecosystem to consolidate that this is going to cause some hiccups for some of our clients. So we will be reaching out. We will, will be offering to help out with some of this licensing stuff um, and, and make sure that people are okay. Um, but I, I don't think it's a, you're going to owe way more money situation or you're going to owe way less. I think most of our clients are going to end up ab about the same, um, but we're going to have to see how that goes. 
So sorry, Cal, I know that went a little bit long, but uh, they still have enterprise level licensing. There's going to be a new user model. Nothing is going to happen until your renewal. Um, if you have problems with licensing or you have questions about how your solution is going to work and how this should be set up, um, don't hesitate to reach out to us. We are here to help um, and we have previously not wanted to get involved in licensing, but we are going to be helping out um, clients and we can um, we can become a partner um, for licensing. And, and that's something that I've kind of avoided, but with Brian joining our team, with us getting more involved, um, I think that there's a lot of value um, in this piece. So if you're looking for a partner, not just from a solutioning standpoint, but for understanding how to um, get the best return um, on your investment in Smartsheet, don't hesitate to reach out. Awesome. We have five minutes left, so want to open it up if anyone wants to ask questions um, no worries if not but you can pop questions into the chat or you can unmute yourself if you have specific questions about features um or the well, licensing had, or in general i had one more call out that i forgot so guys today we mostly talked about engage and so we did use some forward facing statements and we did you know share a little bit about what we're learning about we are going to be doing another session, uh, which is our quarterly session on what's new with Smartsheet. And because you're not bored of Kelly and I already, it's going to be presented by Kelly and I, and it's going to be on November 7th. And the differentiation between this session and that is that we'll be focusing on things that are already available and how we apply those things that are already available. So if you haven't already, I'm going to go ahead and put in here for our upcoming events. Um, feel free to uh, go ahead and uh, sign up for any of the events that you're interested in. We will be doing a What's New with Smartsheet. Um, I'm also going to be doing, it looks like, Smartsheet and Microsoft Seamless Integration. I'm doing that in November with Caroline. And I'm doing, it looks like an Airtable one for PMO, and I'm doing PMO best practices. So we have several events coming up through the end of this year um, if you want to check in on that. Additionally, if you haven't subscribed, we do send out this content as well as some additional blogs and value adds and things like that from our website. So um, feel free to subscribe for additional content if you're finding this useful or share with your team that couldn't attend. Um, we're, we're trying to spread the message, how we work. Let's work smarter. And Molly, for any users that might be watching this video on YouTube, our upcoming mm -hmm. event and subscribe to our email will all be included in the video description. Is that right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And if people are interested and if they want to meet with us, um, usually there's a, a link in our YouTube channel as well um, to schedule a meeting with us. So we do a free discovery call um, to kind of walk through what their solution is and what they need and if we can help. And if we can't help, usually we um, send them to resources that might be able to help them. So we're pretty nice like that. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. I think that's it. Don't see any questions in the chat. Thank you um, for those of you who are able to make it and those of you who are listening on YouTube. And uh, we will talk to you next time. Thanks, Kelly. Thanks, everyone. Have a good one. Echolocity.